Welcome to Using Your Teacher Voice, episode 14. Today I want to talk about PLNs and how we were able to use Google Drive to enhance the work of our PLN and create a useful product in the end. So let me start off by talking about my PLN a little bit. Uh, I have a great PLN. Um, I have a lot of great people that I teach with uh, in my building that I can go to for, you know, with questions, looking for some comment, uh, to bounce some ideas off of. Uh, you know, get some feedback. So I've got a lot of people around me in my building that I can go to. And I've got a great Twitter following. Uh, a lot of people across the nation that I can tap into with questions or ideas, uh, both in content areas and just education in general, tech in integration. Um, if you're not familiar with the idea of the professional learning network of the PLN, this is building a, a, a network of people uh, that you can connect with that you can use for advice and guidance and direction or that they can use you for some of that as well. Uh, the network idea is that you know through the, uh, the collective knowledge of the group we can do great things. Um, so my PLN story this week uh, I wanted to share with you today because I thought it was a good uh, example of what can be done with a good PLN uh, and how to use it effectively uh, and, and in the end, we created a good product, too. So I wanted to share that story with you today uh, to show you how you might be able to use your PLN. So if I back up to last semester, um, I wanted to create a automatic emailer uh, to let students know missing assignments, things that they were missing. Um, I was using our gradebook program to print off missing grade reports and, and progress reports, but you know, on block schedule, you only met every other day, and I wanted to have, you know, something a little more regular as a reminder. Um, in the end, I also wanted to reach out to parents, too, and the printed sheet wasn't a good method to reach parents. So I, I played around with some different things, and I ended up creating a Google Sheets um, where I listed students, student emails, and then I typed in their missing assignments. And then using the add-on form mule, um, it merged the fields into an email and sent them to my email list. <coughs> um, that worked out fairly well. Um, it, was, it was very manual, but it did what I wanted it to do. Um, I then went in and I added in uh, names of resource teachers for students that had like a study hall. So their resource teachers knew if they had missing assignments they could be working on. Um, one day, one of those resource teachers stopped me and asked me, you know, like, how, how do you have all the time to do all this, this emailing and stuff? And, and I kind of explained to him my process, and I shared him the Google Sheet that I was using for this. Um, he liked it. We, we talked about how to use it a little bit, and he kind of adapted it to his own uses. Uh, I eventually added parents in as well. And then to automate it, uh, I did some formatting, some, you know, some, um, some, some formulas, to, to take, you know, like check boxes and, and uh, turning them into a list of assignments that were missing. But in the end, it was still a very manual process in which I had to, like, select different items, you know, and then I used formulas to copy information from one form to, a, or one sheet to another sheet, which formula could read and send off. It worked. It did what I wanted it to do. Um, and it was effective. So, you know, I kept doing that. My goal was that this semester I was going to revisit it and try to improve it a little bit by using forms to generate the data to email out. Well, one of the people I had shared this with, I shared this with several people, and, and uh, I had also talked about it in my uh, session at ICE, Indiana Connected Educators Conference uh, in the fall. Um, I shared it with some people there as well. But um, one of the teachers I work with, Rachel Rao, English teacher, uh, I had shared this with her, and she had wanted to also do where she used forms to generate that data. So instead of manually typing in or using, you know, checks into boxes to show what was missing, she wanted to use forms to generate that data, make it a little easier, a better interface, so to speak. And she and I talked about it a little bit, and I said that I was wanting to do that as well, um, but she got to it before I did. And so Tuesday afternoon, she sent me a text message. We had talked about it Tuesday morning a little bit. Tuesday afternoon, she sent me a text message um, asking me a question of how to do something. Um, over the course of probably the next hour, we text back and forth, you know, different things. And then finally, I was like, you know, let me come down here and I'll take a look at this. We can talk about this together. Um, we were still both at school. This is Tuesday after, right after school, about 3, 3.30 or so. Uh, anyway, I go down there and we talk about what she was trying to do. And she had a form and she was typing in a student name, typing in an email address, and, and typing in the missing assignments. 
Uh, we talked a little bit about that. We devised, a, we devised the form a little bit where it was student drop-down names and student drop-down emails, um, you know, so we didn't have to type everything in, and, you know, and check boxes for the uh, missing assignments. But then we were like, well, you know, how do you match up a parent email, which isn't the standard format with the student name? Student name is, you know, first name, last name at evsck12.com. So matching up student name and student email wasn't too difficult, but the parent was. Uh, we talked a little bit about this, how to do this, and we wanted to create where we, through the form, entered a name and missing assignments, and then sheets with, you know, some formatting, some formulas, would match the name to the email addresses, auto-populate those fields so that we could use formula to email out. Um, over the course of the afternoon and evening, I spent probably three, maybe four hours, Rachel spent about that much time, trying to come up with a way of taking that one database set of information, an index of information from one place and auto-populating it to another place based on names that we had typed in. And I worked on this, I worked on this, and she worked on it, and we went back and forth on different things, uh, uh, different ideas. Um, I ended up with a, a decent working model. It was still a little manual, uh, but using a VLOOKUP command, I could match up the information. Uh, but you had to, after you entered it with the form, you had to then copy that formula down the columns to make it work. So, you know, it was still a little bit manual process, but it was, a, you know, the interface, the input of information got a lot easier. Uh, it wasn't exactly what we wanted, but we were still working on it. Uh, I had talked to a buddy of mine who was a banker who used to use Excel a lot. Um, he now has people that use Excel, and so he, he had some ideas, but, you know, uh, it was some limited information. Um, and then uh, Rachel had brought in two math teachers that we work with. Um, one of them, Grant Welp, who did a lot of um, statistics with the football team. And then another one, a former NASA mathematician, uh, tech geek, and all-around good nerd. Um, you know, she brought him in as well, and we, between the four of us, we started bouncing around some ideas. Uh, Wednesday morning, um, Paul Fisher had said that he was working on some things. He was trying to do some things. And then Friday, uh, Wednesday afternoon, Paul and I sat down for about 15, 20 minutes, and we talked about where the choke points were. Uh, what was the problems? What was the key issues that we just couldn't hurdle to make this an automatic, I input something in a form, and it automatically emails out? Uh, we had some ideas. We had some pieces. But we just couldn't get over that last hurdle, uh, last couple hurdles, really. Um, that afternoon, I had class, so I wasn't able to work on this, but Paul, he had some time, and he nailed it. And by 6 o'clock, we had a done, finished product where I take a form, I enter a student's name in, I click on additional teachers that I want to email this to, like a resource teacher, and missing assignments, comments, great, things like that. And it automatically matched the name to parent email, student email, merged it into an email and automatically sent it. it. We never had to go into the sheets. It automatically did everything for us. Um, this was a great moment, obviously. It, it created a product that we were looking for and we thought that we could really utilize. But it also was a great example of how the PLN works. Um, and, and think about this. So, so think about the speed of which this happened. That, you know, we started this basically Tuesday morning by Wednesday night, we had a done product. Um, now, granted, a lot of that was during the school day, you know, so there wasn't time to work on it then. But, you know, we, in the course of less than two days, went from concept to finished product. That is great. And then if you think about our PLNs, how the PLN wasn't just the people that we were working with. Obviously, we went to those people. You know, we had people, Rachel and I started working together. We brought other people into our group. And then we reached out to people outside of our direct group to people that we knew that we had expertise. I brought somebody in. Paul Fisher brought some people in outside of his group that weren't teachers, but that had some expertise. Think about the idea of the PLN that you have the ability to connect with people and that through them you connect to other people, so that we make our network bigger. It looked like a Venn diagram, a repeated Venn diagram in a way, that you know we had these overlapping PLNs and that the knowledge went all the way across the board. Uh, they were all interconnected. Very powerful, very great, and, and it was a great symbol or great example of how this should work. Um, also, you know, I like this story because uh, the PLN 
it wasn't like mean spirited. It wasn't like, oh, you had an idea and my idea is better. Um, no, it was it was a collaborative, positive environment in which we worked together to solve the problem. And we stepped from one place to the next place to the next place, and it was a constant improvement. And it wasn't like we were using people, um, you know, we, we weren't, you know, uh, taking things from people. We, you know, we were collaborating with them and working together with them. Um, so, you know, all those things are, are great examples of, of the power of the PLN. And, um, you know, I hope that you have a, a, a similar PLN that you can uh, lean on. Also, I think that this is, you know, an interesting example of how we could use Google Drive to enhance that PLM. This document that Rachel started Tuesday morning was shared between me and then we shared it to Paul and Grant and we shared it to other people. Um, we were all able to work on it collaboratively all at the same time. And so um, this would not have been possible before. Either we all got together and we all worked on it in one place at one time which would not have worked because we didn't have the ability to reach out to people and, and work asynchronously. Um, but, we, but with Google Drive, we could all add in our own pieces. We could see each other. We could work you know, independently. Uh, before, you'd have to create a document and send it to somebody. They would work on it, send it back. Well, that mean that the other people in the group didn't have access to it then. Uh, there could have been some overlap or some whatever. So you know, Google Drive really enhanced the power of the PLN and made it work much more effectively. And then, you know, in the end, we created a document, or we created a, a, a device that we believe, in the end, improves communication with the students and the parents. So, yes, this PLN was good. Yes, Google Drive was very effective in, in doing what we wanted to do. But in the end, we did something that we believe helped the students. And, and that's really what we are all about, and that's what we do. And so, you know, it wasn't just like, oh, this was a teacher thing. This really had wide-reaching impact. Uh, that helped other people. Final thought about this today um, is, I think this is kind of indicative of education. So in other professions, in other fields, if you have a good idea or you have something that others don't, you don't tend to share it. You keep it to yourself. You keep it so that you look better or that it does your job better. Uh, or you use it to make money, right, or leverage to better your position. Um, you know, my original, my original emailing um, sheet was very manual, but I, sh I shared it with people. You know, they wanted it, I gave it to them. Uh, and then when Rachel wanted to improve upon it, I was okay with that. We collaborated. It was an open, you know, an open source environment, uh, and we shared it. And e even now that the four of us, you know, kind of created this, this system and we created a process and a, and a, and a, a tool we'll give it to whoever wants it. Um, it's not something that we're holding. You know, other professions may want to keep that to themselves uh, or, you know, leverage it for some reason. In education, we don't. And that's one of the great things about this profession, that we created something collaboratively, together, and then we're free to share it to people even outside of the group that did it. Uh, so anyway, I hope that you have a great PLN. I hope that you uh, someday have a similar PLN story that you could share. And if you don't have this kind of network, you need to start building that uh, online through Twitter, um, in your building or whatever. Find those people that you can go to uh, that can help you uh, or that you have something to offer them. I look forward to seeing your comments and, of course, seeing your stories in the near future.